You're all very welcome to the UCD webinar for the MA in American Politics and Foreign Policy. My name is Emer Beasley and I work in the College of Arts and Humanities. We're joined by Eugenio Lilly, who is the director of the course. And we're also joined by Ross O'Leary, who is a recent graduate from the course. Uh, we are going to be talking to you for about 20 minutes or so. We're going to keep it short and sweet. We'd like to hear from you wherever you are. Let us know your questions, your queries about the course. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you get the information that you need uh, on the course and about the situation um, uh, through this session. So just very quickly by way of intro, we're all, you know, all our minds are on COVID and what the implications are for next semester. So I'll just maybe run through that very quickly before I hand over to Eugenio. Right now, we know that term will start on the 21st of September. That is definitively the, the first day of term uh, in the next uh, academic year. It is likely to be blended learning. So a mix of face-to-face -face teaching and online teaching. Details of which are being finalized at the moment. A lot of it will depend on the one meter, two meter social distancing. So we're just waiting for confirmation of those details nationally and internationally. And then UCD will confirm the details directly with you. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for bearing with us. And as soon as we know the details, you will know them too. But it's good for you to know the term will start on the 21st of September. So um, like I said earlier, please send in your questions in the chat function. We would love to hear from you. I'm going to hand over to Eugenio now, and uh, we'll hear from Ross after that. Eugenio. Thank you, Imar. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Eugenio Lilly, and I am the program director of the Masters in American Politics and Foreign Policy. So why, why should you take a Masters in American Politics and Foreign Policy? The short answer is that the United States remains the most influential nation in the world. Uh, what happens in the United States has ripple effects uh, across the globe. For example, think about the current uh, Black Lives Matter protests and the, the, that we, we are experiencing. They started in the United States and quickly they spread uh, to many other countries. Likewise, uh, US military interventions abroad uh, have significant and enduring impacts on international relations. We can think about uh, the decision to go to war in Iraq in 2003 and uh, the decision to join the NATO military intervention in Libya in 2011. This program draws on a variety of disciplines, including political science, uh, international relations, and history to explore the sustainability of US leadership abroad and prosperity at home. Some of the core modules that you will be taking uh, as part of this program include um, challenges in US foreign policy, the United States and the Middle East, uh, Trump's America, and uh, the global politics of cybersecurity. This last one is a unique module uh, that will explore the impact of new technologies on international relations, something that is becoming more and more important on, uh, for our daily lives. Another important thing that I, want, I would like to point out is that this program, uh, when was, it was established, it was the first of its kind in both Europe and the United States. Um, without any further ado, uh, I will stop it here and I'll be happy to receive your questions and give you uh, all the details that you want on anything related to the program. That's great. Thank you very much for that overview uh, and introduction, Eugenio. That's really, really useful and very helpful. Our guests are very shy. We haven't had any questions yet, so please don't be shy. Please send us in your questions. And um, in, in the interim, we're going to bring in Ross, Ross O'Leary who is a graduate from UCD. He did his undergraduate in economics and history, went out to work in the cut and thrust world of hedge funding and came back to do this master's at UCD. He is now working in the global strategic communications company, CW8, um, uh, and has a fantastic experience to share with you today. But I might start, Ross, if that's okay, by asking you to give us a little bit of an overview what, how did you choose this course and what was it like for you? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for, for having me here today. Um, I think when I think back about when I made the decision to do the, uh, the Masters in American Politics and Foreign Policy, I remember doing my undergrad, as you said, in economics and history at UCD um, and 
doing a lot of modules on kind of American history, American political history. And um, there was one professor, um, Dr. Sandra Scanlon, who um, made me aware about the program. And it was about, for about two or two and a half, three years, I kind of had it in the back of my head that when I eventually went to look at masters, uh, this would be the one for me. Because looking at different masters programs, some of them are interesting. Some of them are, are really good for, um, you know, career progression or that kind of thing. And I, the, this MA in particular stood out to me because it offered both. Um, it seemed like something that would give me a lot of opportunities in, in my future career, but also be something that I would be interested enough in to be able to delve into, specialize in what I, I love doing and what I was reading about anyway in my, in my spare time. Um, so I, I then applied, I was lucky enough to be accepted and I had an absolutely fantastic year. Um, I graduated in December, just gone. Um, but in, in August of last year, I started working in a, um, a public relations and strate strategic uh, consultancy firm. And um, I think a lot of what I learned at the Institute definitely shaped, um, obviously, that the jump into, into public relations, but I think has shaped my, my interests in general. Um, and and I, I look forward to see where it brings me in the future. That's really interesting. And can I ask you, how do you feel this course helped you prepare for the career that you have now embraced? Well, I, I think um, first and foremost, it, as I said, it, it piqued my interest in, in the likes of the news media system. Um, but also it gave, it gave me, I, I think that you develop uh, critical thinking skills in your undergraduate degree. But what I found throughout the master's was, was that I, I wouldn't say I mastered critical thinking, but I certainly um, it, it really helped in that regard. Um, and a lot of my analytical skills, my writing abilities, um, and I think overall my confidence with the subject matter um, kind of propelled me to, to be able to comment on, um, uh, you know, developing themes in, in the news media, in, in the international media system, um, being able to, you know, research effectively um, and how to um, calculate bias. Um, you know, there's a whole host of, of different things that, that it, um, it, it prepared me for. Um, but I think what, what really stands out about this master's is that, it, it, in, in my view in any way, in, in order to understand uh, America, you have to understand America's place in the world, how it interacts with, with other countries. So I think that gives you a really good uh, overview of not just American politics, but geopolitics, um, und understanding how the rest of the world looks at America uh, and you know, the foreign policies of other countries related to America. Um, so it gives you a really great overview of just geopolitics in general, but then it also gives you the space to specialize in what you're interested in and what you might want to gear your, your future career towards, um, which I think is, is a, quite a unique um, opportunity that this master's offers in comparison to say some of the, the different master's programs that a lot of my friends would have, um, friends and colleagues would have, would have done. Thanks for that, Ross. And can I ask you, so you did both your undergrad and your graduate here. What's the difference? What's it like being a master's student as compared to the undergraduate student? It's a good question. Um, I think, so I, I took a year out after I did my, my undergraduate degree at UCD um, because I thought I wanted to work in, in the big bad world of finance. But um, I uh, quickly realized that it was time for me to go and, and do something that I was actually interested in. Um, and I think that the difference was, um, as much as I enjoyed my undergrad, I think having that, that year um, to kind of take perspective and understand what I, or have a vague idea of what I wanted to do in the future, it, it definitely um, matured me. But then coming back into the master's, uh, I, I think having that real world, real world perspective um, bring, makes you bring to the master's a, a more, a higher level of seriousness. Um, not that I didn't take my undergrad seriously, but I, I certainly didn't go to UCD Dramsock when I was doing my, my master's degree. Um, I think the difference would be that um, you also get a, a very close point of contact with experts in their field, like Eugenio, um, like Ali Reza Haji Hosseini, um, with Liam Kennedy, uh, who also actually care about what you're interested in, care about how you're doing and, and what you want to do in the future. And are really there to, to help guide you um, to towards you know delving into the subject matter that that suits you best um, and, and will prepare you best for the future. 
um, which I don't think you really, it may be in some degrees, but in, in my experience, it's, it's much more um, kind of broad in uh, the undergrad in UCD, whereas a master's degree really gives you the opportunity to, to sit there with experts that I, I don't think you would get anywhere else. And can you tell us, Ross, a little bit about the, what the class was like and the class size and the makeup of the class? What kind of people did you meet through this master's? Um, that was probably one of the, the, uh, the high points of uh, undertaking the, this master's program because um, I can't remember the exact figures in my program, but over the, the three offered at, at the Institute, um, the diversity, not only in people, but diversity of experience um, really opens up your worldview. Um, so in, in the, the MA in American Politics and Foreign Policy, there were people that had, that had worked on gubernatorial campaigns, uh, they worked on Capitol Hill in the Senate, some people had worked in uh, you know, media organizations, I'd work in, worked in finance. There was people who not only were uh, diverse in, in terms of ethnicity, but background that when you bring that all together, especially when you're looking at America from Ireland, from the outside, um, and speaking with you know American students and um, students from all over the world, your worldview is um, I, I, I think in my view anyway sh my worldview was was definitely shaped by my year at the institute because the diversity of opinion and, and background and knowledge um, really just brings a, a, a new color to how you see America but also how you see the rest of the world um, and it also it, it's it's small enough that um, you're able to specialize. As I said, working with Eugenio and, and, and the other uh, professors, um, but it's all it's it's a nice group as well. Uh, I know in, in my experience anyway, our year was very much a family. You know, we still have a Facebook group. Uh, everyone's now all over the world. Uh, there's people all over the states, all over Europe, and we all still chat. We we're trying to arrange a Zoom during during lockdown, but um, uh, I think we'll just have to have a, a reunion in person, maybe in Washington D.C. But we'll have to wait and see. That's great. And can I tell, can I ask, what's it like working in a big global strategic communications and publicity firm? What's it like to be in those kinds of places? Um, it's, it's fascinating, first and foremost, because um, I think my, my interest in the news media system uh, are really honed in the Clinton Institute. And where I find myself now is kind of at the crux between international business and the, the media. So dealing with um, NASDAQ listed clients um, operating all across the world is interesting. But what I find really interesting is, is working with journalists who are, again, experts in their field um, in, in some of the biggest, biggest publications in the world. Um, you know, I've worked quite extensively with, with CNN, Sky News, the Financial Times, uh, Bloomberg, you name it. And I think being there, um, making news almost is, uh, is fascinating. And being able to take the skills that I learned in the Institute in kind of deciphering um, what's going on in the world and seeing how I can take our clients to add to those conversations uh, is, is just plain exciting, I think is, is the, the best word for it. How fantastic is that? Ross O'Leary is taking on the world. It's brilliant. <laughs> Eugenio, can I bring you in at this stage, if that's okay? We just have a question here from Michael. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the dissertations and what that looks like? Sure. Uh, okay. The dissertation is basically the last part of, of the program, and it is usually something, a piece of written work uh, between 12,000 and 15,000 words that you will be uh, agreeing and it's on the topic with your supervisor, which could be myself or someone else here at the Clinton Institute. So there's a lot of freedom in terms of choosing the topic that you want to work on. And then of course you will be supervised by uh, that person uh, throughout the process. And in the end, um, you know, depending on uh, your future plans that could be uh, a first step toward uh, a PhD uh, application if you want to stay in academia and proceed with your studying or it could be like a good piece of work that you would be happy to have because you know it's in the end is as Ross I'm sure can can confirm it's a lot of work that an effort you're putting into it and it's good to have it you know in the end uh, this written down and this nice physical uh, uh, evidence of, of your work. 
so if there is any specific question about the, the dissertation, I'm happy to, to answer that. But this is the general idea of what the dissertation is and what it's, uh, it implies. And I would also like to add something uh, to what Ross said, because I think this is something unique uh, about the Institute. Since it's a very small unit, you really have that kind of interaction with academics and your, your fellow classmates that sometimes you cannot really have in, in larger programs, okay? Here you, you really uh, achieve something that, as Ross said, uh, could be a sort of family, uh, okay? Um, family environment. And that allows you to, to receive more uh, feedback and direct immediate feedback on your work, on your interests. And that links also to the, the planning for your dissertation, okay? So I think this is something very important that we have here. And again, maybe in terms of uh, career paths and, and outcomes, uh, Ross is a really good example of where you can go with this master's, but there are also other options. Uh, the master's, it gives you um, the skills and the knowledge to really choose among a wide variety of, of career paths. As I mentioned, one could be staying in, in research. So it could be a university or it could be a research institution or a think tank. Uh, another one could be government. Uh, the most obvious could be foreign affairs and, and diplomacy. Uh, but also the, the civil society and non-governmental organizations addressing uh, international and transnational issues like human rights or climate change or race and, and gender. And finally, private sector could be consultancy, could be risk assessment. And not to forget journalism, because of course, uh, this program is very integrated with the masters in international conflict and, and media. So you will receive also that kind of, um, that kind of uh, information and, and skills. So it's very broad, it's very flexible, and it's very familiar, let's put it this way. Okay, that's great. We have another question in, how many students typically on this MA program? We generally, okay, let's make a distinction. Uh, we have people enrolled in the program and people taking the modules uh, coming from other programs. Generally speaking, we have uh, no more than 10 people enrolled in the specific program. Uh, classes are kept to small numbers to actually provide all the things that I mentioned before. So you will be sitting with around no more than 20, uh, at 30 at most people. But generally speaking, we're talking about 15, 20 people per, per class. Thank you very much. We don't seem to have any more questions coming in. Uh, Ross and Eugenio, I might invite you to say a final word. We'll start with you, Ross, before yeah, we absolutely. close out the session. Um, well, Ima, thank you very much for having me. It was, it was great to chat to everyone. Um, and I, I hope this helps. Uh, if, if anyone has any questions, you know, from the perspective of a, um, an alumna, alumni of uh, the Institute, um, I feel free to grab my email off Emer. Um, I think it's, I would really highly recommend it if you have an, an interest in uh, US politics, foreign policy, or just international politics in general. Um, it really provides so many skills and so many points of interest that uh, I, I don't think any other masters that I've seen uh, will actually provide. And you'll also enjoy being there, which is, which is great. Um, it certainly uh, enjoyed it a lot more than my year in finance, but uh, <laughs> uh -huh. um, now that I'm back out in the big bad world, I, I wish I was back in class with Eugenia, but may maybe someday I'll, I'll come back and do a PhD, who knows? <laughs> Thank you, Ross. And now to you, Eugenio. Well, uh, it's difficult to add anything more to what Ross said and the way he said it, uh, because you know, uh, it's, uh, receiving that kind of information from a former student is, is much better than hearing it from you know, the, the, the people delivering the program itself. But um, I think that um, this is a very good opportunity for anybody interested in, as Ross said, like international relations, US foreign policy, but also to know more about the United States, uh, domestic politics and um, society, uh, all the things that are happening in the United States right now. And domestic politics and foreign policy, they are more intertwined that people generally understand. This program will help you to see that kind of connection and will help you to understand how things happening in the United States influence the world and how dynamics outside of the United States influence society within the United States. 
So I'm also very happy to uh, receive any additional question through my email address that Imer just posted in the chat. And you can find me on, on the website of the Clinton Institute at UCD as well. So please get in touch. We can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation if that feels more, more comfortable. So uh, thank you again to Imer, thank you to Ross, thank you to everybody that organized this, and thank you to the students that took the time to participate in it. Okay, well, thank you both Eugenio and Ross, and thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, you can see Ross very generously there has shared his email in the chat box. Eugenio's email is in there, and also more information about the course on myucd.ie. So once again, thanks for joining us. Um, stay safe and do keep in touch. And uh, once details of the next semester are confirmed, we will be sure to contact you too.